First of all, did you always love blackjack? Because I love blackjack. Well, I've always loved gambling. Gambling. Okay, period. hang on. Let's yeah. start here. Can you? I have a, a video about me loving drinking. I love drinking. Yeah, I can tell. I just. Can, I just yeah. 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 <laughs> it's can you. It's noon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just I just flew in from Savannah. <laughs> yeah. I've been drinking all morning. Yeah. Dana, I didn't stop last night. <laughs> it's noon. He's got a bottle of vodka this big. Yeah. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> on the time you pull your bed right. down. Well, I don't do that. I go. Hard, so wait, hard. What's your number? What's your number? Because I know my number for a bet that where the rush kicks in. Well, like when I I love the feeling of going like I'm all in. I don't look at Joe as the way anyone else looks at Joe. Why is that? I look at him as a moron. Like I <laughs> I, I really do. I honestly do. My favorite thing Joe Rogan's ever That's said cool. to me in the world. So just yesterday, Two Bears One Cave uploaded an episode with Dana Wides, and although usually an episode with Dana means tons of views and some interesting conversations, you know, depending on the on the show, because Burke Kreischer and Tom Segura no longer care about the podcast and are not putting any effort into it, instead of actually taking the opportunity to have some funny conversations and some funny moments, because, you know, they are comedians at the end of the day, they just resorted to asking the most basic questions, things that Dana White has already been asked many times on every other podcast podcast for the past year and so we got nothing new now to be fair it did seem like tom segura was actually trying to have a conversation and do his job but when he comes to burke kreischer he was actually acting so out of control that it's now clear that he's going through that cycle that he goes through where where now his ego is completely through the roof and he can't really control himself because throughout the podcast he was actually interrupting both dana white and tom segura and he got so bad that at some point tom just ignored burke kreischer and had to have a one-on-one one conversation with Dana White. But on top of that, throughout the podcast, Dana White was actually calling out Burke Kreischer and making fun of him whenever he would say the most insane things and act way out of control. And it does make you wonder how Tom Segura can actually put up working with Burke Kreischer. So let's get started. Is shit still around? No, not, not, not anywhere that I've seen. It's well, not because you're in what they argue, like boxing, <clears throat> and this is and Vegas. apparently the most corrupt place in the world is that they say that boxing this is rigged. definitely not the most corrupt place in the world that's for sure no. bro. this place is so regulated now i mean th this this place was definitely built by the mob yeah but this th this city is regulated the game that's why there's that's why there's uh, uh sports here now i mean yeah this is this this is uh, i tell people this all the time about gambling right yeah if you really are a gambler and you like even if you're in your your fucking podunk town. They got some shitty little casino down the street. Get a plane ticket and fly to Vegas and gamble here. Yeah. The gambling here is way more legit than in oh, any of these. I believe th that. These other casinos that they pop up anywhere else. The most important question that I think anybody can ask you is definitely let's talk about blackjack. Okay. So you yes, are. Yes. This is. So, this is. There's perfect. so many stories about you. I have friends that have played with you who shall remain nameless, but it's like legendary. Were you, first of all, did you always love blackjack? Cause I love blackjack. Well, I've always loved gambling. Gambling. Okay, hang on. Let's yeah. start here. Can you, I have a, a video about me loving drinking. I love drinking. Yeah. I could tell. I just, I, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's you it's noon. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just, I just flew in from Savannah. Yeah. I've been drinking all morning. Yeah. Dana, I didn't stop last night. It's noon. He's got a bottle of vodka this big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, give me a, what do you love about gambling? Explain gambling to people that the Mennonites that might be listening, like explain what's beautiful about gambling. Cause I, there, I have a passion for gambling, but it's a little more high stakes. I can't fall in love with a hundred dollars on a hand, but like, what do you love about gambling? I'm curious. It's a good question. I, so I love the energy of a casino. I love walking in. I love the energy of this city. This and look, for the past couple of months, we have been comparing the Flagrant Podcast to Two Bears, One Cave, even speculating if if it could, if the Flagrant Podcast could be the next Two Bears. However, now that we have a perfect comparison because Dana White has done both podcasts, you know, to be fair to the Flagrant Podcast and to Andrew Schultz, it's very clear who is still putting some effort into the show and actually treating it like a comedy podcast. Because even though Schultz didn't push back when Dana was talking about uh, Slap Fight having more followers than Real Madrid. They did cover some pretty interesting subjects, in my opinion, from silly and in a drama like uh, Dana White fake walking out of the Howie Mandel podcast. But also, they did debunk some rumors about Dana White being banned for beating the casino too much.
much, which, you know, it was an interesting thing that uh, I believe Joe Rogan used to push a lot. But even just the vibe of the podcast, it felt more chill and more comedy focused. But again, with Tom and Burt Kreischer, it felt like if Tom was actually trying to have a serious conversation and, and ask some serious questions while Burt Kreischer was either nervous, drunk, or both, because once again, at some point, he was trying way too hard to hijack the questions once Tom Segura had already asked him. But because Dana White is a complete pro at what he does, he went straight into sales mode and was basically repeating the same old talking points and the same stories that he already told in every other podcast. However, because he's also pretty ruthless, he made fun of Burke Kreischer for something that we all know really, really bothers him. Because for the first 10 minutes, Burke Kreischer was actually pouring himself drinks out of this massive vodka jug, which was just insane. I mean, it was clearly intended for Dana to ask about it so that he could uh, pitch his vodka company with Tom. But instead of that happening, Dana just made fun of him for drinking at noon and for having a massive vodka container, which was just looked silly. I mean, I can't believe that he actually used his own vodka as a comedy prop unintentionally. And by the way, don't forget to like the video. It helps out so much with the algorithm, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Because uh, I don't know anything about the game. A hand, is it over quickly? Like, is it a complicated or quick thing? So what happens is... You guys got to come do this one. Yeah, I want to. <laughs> I want Absolutely to. not. I want to. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, so, I just love, I love the tickle of gamble. The gambling, the ga thing I love about gambling is when you're not thinking about drinking, you're not thinking about your family, you're in the moment and everything's tingling inside you and you go and your heart's racing. That moment of gamble is so sexy, but it's, but, it, but it's, it's got to be worth something to you. That's, That's the thing that, that with is me true. is that it, it no longer is worth something to me. So like I, I I'm not willing to bet that much money. So it's got to tickle you. Like, but then see, then you don't get the rush. Yeah, the That's rush the is what I want. Because you know what I mean. They always I, say in at listen, blackjack. I don't know if you ever heard you're this. Preaching go, to the preacher here. When so you're, what's, what's the what's when you're the, gambling on blackjack and they go and you uh you that first time you reduce your bet. You know you go like you've been betting a thousand and you pull it back to a hundred and then someone goes oh you I guess you uh this is how you want to hit blackjack like you're always gonna get blackjack. On the time you pull your bet right. down. Well, I don't do that. I go hard. So wait, hard. what's your number? What's your number? Because I know my number for a bet that where the rush kicks in. Well, like when I I love the feeling of going like I'm all in. Like I love that feeling of going. This is all the money I brought to the table. I'm putting it all on black. I love that feeling. What's your number? If that's my thing is about winning. I want to win. I I want to I want to come. You what you said is dead on. I want to beat them. I want to win. So I'm not there. You know, you'll get these guys that'll go in there and, and play for, for, for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. I've played for 18, 19 hours. If I'm there 18, 19 hours, that's not a good thing. That means yeah. I'm getting my ass kicked and I'm trying to get back out. What I do is I go in and I try to be strategic and i try to be disciplined and by the way keep in mind that bro crusher literally just said no to gambling with dana white because he doesn't like betting that much money and then essentially turned the whole conversation about himself when dana was simply being nice and polite by offering to gamble with him but then later on when bert realizes that gambling with dana white means hanging out with him and potentially recording the whole thing then he completely changes and turns into the biggest gambler out there and look Look, as boring as Tom Segura was, at least he was asking the right questions and keeping the conversation going. And because Dana White is an actual interesting person and has a lot, a, a lot to talk about, he was the one mainly carrying the whole podcast. Because even though I have seen Dana get mad or get into arguments on other podcasts, when he comes to Burr, he was being extremely nice, way too nice and patient and professional. Because even after Burr cut him off and hijacked the question in a very rude way, Dana was extremely nice said that it was a great question and then answered it in 19 months it's things like anywhere between if you if you did a real valuation on it mm -hmm. it's anywhere between 750 and a billion dollars wow jesus in Christ. 19 months so wait jesus. here's my question so we're all wealthy men in this room mm -hmm. but we're all morons really yeah i don't disagree <laughs> how do we well, who who measures your ideas like where because I, I, I think I know who you are for, based on Joe talking about you. You're just a dude from Boston that got slapped in the head a couple times. And <laughs> and, and when you f***ing tell me this is horrible and this isn't going to work, yeah. I love it even then more. You, then you that's really what dig it. That's yeah. what 
really gets me going. So haters yeah. are my favorite fucking people on earth. I love the haters, man. They, they um, you can either, if you don't like haters, you better stay the f off social media. You know what I mean? I love that shit. Yeah. It's, 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 it fuels you. It's my favorite. Thing. Remember that uh, when we were backstage, I think uh, it was Lorenzo there. Can I tell you, man, like, I don't look at you as like a dad and I don't look at Joe as a dad. I absolutely don't look at Joe as a dad. <laughs> I really don't. I look at Joe. I don't look at Joe as the way anyone else looks at Joe. Why is that? I look at him as a moron. Like, I, I, I really do. I honestly do. My favorite thing Joe Rogan's ever That's said cool. to me in the world. What makes Rogan a genius is that Rogan comes up with this shit that you're like, wow. Yeah, I never really thought about that. Yeah. He thinks about shit that. He likes to go deep. Yeah. yeah. It, Let's it, celebrate him for one second. Because I don't think I don't think anyone knows him. Like, I, and it's the number one question that gets asked to me is like, yo, what's Joe Rogan like? Now, Bert's comment about all of them being wealthy, but morons is a little bit weird because it's almost like if Bert can no longer make fun of himself because when calling himself a moron, he feels a need to also remind everyone how wealthy he is. And we all know that, especially when it comes to Dana White, everyone knows that he's massively successful and rich. But because of that, it makes what happens next even better because at some points, Bert Kreischer gets a massive, a cold reality check in which he realizes realizes that his ego is way overinflated and he's not really as big as he thinks he is and watching it unfold in real time is very very interesting because for example not only did he try to shit on Joe Rogan and failed miserably I mean he actually tried to big bro Rogan in front of uh, Dana and Tom who are potentially some of his closest colleagues or friends but then when he saw that they were having none of it and they were not on board he quickly backtracked and started talking about how, how instead they should celebrate Joe Rogan for a whole minute. I mean, that's absolutely insane. I honestly don't know how Bert Crusher is able to lift up that heavy jug of vodka without a spine. But also, him saying that was so random because even though, yes, Joe Rogan doesn't hold back and is pretty ruthless when uh, talking about Bert, I don't think he's ever just came out and said that uh, Bert Crusher is a moron. I feel like that's pretty random and unnecessary, especially without a punchline. Here's my next question. I name drop him a lot. I do. I obviously do. I'm a name dropper. I'm, I'm a regular <laughs> human being. I'm a regular guy, right? If I get on a private jet, I take a picture, I show everyone. <laughs> Who do you name drop? <laughs> something crazy like uh, 17 years. Something. I don't remember what the number was, but I didn't miss one fight anywhere in the world. Do you have any regrets as a dad about that? Huh? Do you have any regrets no, as a dad? No, no, it was awesome. Me either. Fuck them. No, I, I, <laughs> no I, I, you, I'll tell you what I was lucky with as technology got better i had the biggest production facility in las vegas so if i was going to miss a game or a play or something like that i watched it live uh oh, I, i'd have my wow. team show up and they'd film it they were filming football games for That's me pretty cool i watched it live yeah so i would literally interact with the kids after the after, after the, the thing wow game or play or whatever it was i didn't miss a thing i i i saw everything and look, this is what's so crazy about what just happened, okay? If you remember a while back, Burt Crusher had a moment on a podcast with Chrissy D, which went absolutely viral. And in that moment, they were both crying and sad about how much time they, they were missing with their kids because of work. Now, when it comes to Chrissy D, I haven't been keeping up with him, but it does seem like he went the family route. Whereas Burt Kreischer, all this time and money later, now we're just finding out how he truly feels about the whole situation because it's clear that he wasn't really sad and instead, he just mimics and matches the energy of whoever is in front of him. And funny enough, it did seem like if Burt Kreischer was trying to recreate a similar moment with Dana White, but as soon as Dana said no, Burt Kreischer completely changed and agreed, even before listening to the full explanation, which was that, you know, Dana is so rich that he can actually go out of his way to make sure he doesn't miss a moment with his kids. But then, what made Burt Kreischer realize that he wasn't as big or as famous or as wealthy as he thought he was was when he tried inviting himself to dana white's ufc christmas party thinking that him simply offering to show up to the party and take pictures with the employees would be a, an insane offer that dana white couldn't refuse and couldn't say no to not knowing that the ufc actually has a list celebrities going to the christmas parties which is absolutely insane i throw parties uh in the summertime yeah and i'll, I'll turn the whole uh, you know we have this beautiful uh, 
uh, backyard at, at UFC headquarters, and we turn it into a carnival. And yeah. bring your f***ing kids and your family and let your wife and kids be a part of what you do. You know, I want, when, when my employees go to work, I want their family to love what they do and, yeah. and, and be a part of this thing. I, I, I've built, like, the best, strongest team That's awesome. in business, in my opinion. By, so the, way, wake, by the way, we are totally welcome to be invited to one of those parties yeah, anytime yeah, yeah. And, and we'll, yeah we'll take pictures people all would that love shit. for you I guys to come yeah that'd be great. Imagine we do manager. concerts back there and you know I've, i have an amphitheater in the in the back of the uh oh. i mean you guys could Tom do comedy back there venues. you could do anything <laughs> and we got the apex next door we have the yeah. amphitheater in the in the backyard yeah. and we have the apex next door um but when i throw christmas parties like kid rock snoop we had uh oh, we would love to do those oh we we the red hot chili peppers have played <laughs> okay we've had like That's everybody cool. has played we'll at our fly Christmas ourselves parties. out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nelly played last year. He f killed it. Anyway, w w it's a fun to be a UFC employee. Let me I just bet. say that. I bet it is. So Forest when Chris I get up in the morning, yeah, Dana wakes up. I focus on my health now. And look, it is really funny how Dana White is able to politely tell Burr that him showing up to take pictures with the UFC employees at the Christmas party would be pretty much meaningless because of the fact that they're used to seeing actual massive A-list celebrities. And if we use Tom Segura's example, earlier example of how much it sucks going from betting $1,000 hands to $100 in blackjack, you know, the UFC employees getting Burke Kreischer as a uh, as a as an artist or as an entertainer would be a massive downgrade. In fact, if Burke Kreischer ever showed up to a UFC Christmas party, that would be a, a huge sign that the UFC is in financial trouble. But hey, to be fair, at least Burke Kreischer is actually trying. I mean, he failed miserably, but in terms of creating opportunities, Burt is that one guy who isn't really afraid of coming across as being pushy or a salesman as long as it gets the job done. However, where things get a little bit weird and funny at the same time is when right before the podcast ends, Burke Kreischer tries way too hard to pencil in a session, a, a uh, gambling session with Dana White, and uh, Dana ends up calling him out because if you remember, earlier in the episode, Burke said no to gambling with Dana because he didn't like betting a lot of money. But now, all of a sudden, that changed. Uh, we'd love to see you at a fight, but more importantly, next time I come to Vegas... I would love to hit the back rat table with you. Done. I would I'm going to take text you, guys. you, and I would love to do uh, it. September 27th and 28th, I'm at the... Uh, where am I? I don't know. I am... Where am I? Resort September Resort 27th World. and 28th, I'm at Resorts World Theater. Dude, I would love to play Baccarat with Let's you. Let's do it. Brother. So let me ask you a question Shoot. before we wrap this up. So you love the tickle. You love... So what? What? what what's your number for per hand? What do you want to bet per hand? I had John Mayer asked me this, mm -hmm. and it's the number that makes name, you uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah, yeah, name drop. Name drop. Go ahead. The number Let's that see. makes you uncomfortable is the number that is your tickle. Right. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's what a you would gamble on a hand. Yeah, per hand. Oh, not per hand. That's my. Oh, that's my that's marker. Your that's my marker. To, okay, that's, that's your marker. Way so more than I so thought. So you'll you were take a two hundred fifty thousand dollar marker. It's probably, I, I would imagine, so your limit is probably 10000 a hand, right? I, I don't know how it works. I've never gambled like this. So I'm in for $250,000. I'll tell you what, let's make it th a clean three, September right. 27th. But here's the thing, and this is what I do with Taylor. Okay. Yeah. What's your number that we quit? How much do you want to win? You're going you're gonna to get a marker for $250,000, Yes. right? And let, let's assume, I'm assuming they're going to let you play 10000 a hand at two fifty. Okay. Because they have... Like four hundred and fifty thousand dollar hands, you, you have to have a ten million dollar credit line. Okay, I got that. So I think, right? I'm assuming know, they're going to let you pay ten a hand. What is the number that you want to walk away with? What do you want to win that night? I, I'm, I'm going to say a ridiculous number because I don't know money. Okay. Like a million dollars. A million dollars. That's that a, a big fuck. You you have a two hundred and fifty thousand okay, dollar credit okay, line. Okay, you can play okay, ten thousand. Okay, 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 I don't know. You want a million dollars? I don't know. How about, I don't know. How about if you were if you were to win? If I was to win a hundred thousand dollars, if I, if I won a hundred thousand dollars, I could pay Bobby Lee, and I'd be good. Pay Bobby Lee. I can pay him ten grand. You know. Bobby. Oh, okay. Yeah, but like a hundred grand is that a lot? 
And look, I think we can all agree that the last five minutes of that podcast were absolutely insane and a little bit hard to watch because on one hand, you do have Tom Segura who is being polite and nicely telling uh, Dana White that they should gamble next time they're both in, in Vegas. Very respectful, trying to end the show. But then Burke Kreischer completely interrupts both of them, stops the show from ending, and basically tries to schedule a gambling session with Dana White when earlier in the episode again he was saying how he didn't like gambling which is absolutely insane because in Bert's mind he realized after Dana White uh, was talking about how he would gamble for other people and they would shoot videos he realized that it could be content for him and so he wanted to pencil something in with Dana White for like two weeks out which is just so disrespectful I mean I can't even I I might be wrong, but I think it's absolutely disrespectful to, like, in person, try to schedule something in two weeks out with Dana White, who is absolutely one of the busiest men out there. And also, I do remember a while back seeing a video or a vlog on the uh, Busting with the Boys YouTube channel, and I'm pretty sure it was back when they launched uh, Poor Osos, and both Tom and Burr were in Vegas and had some pretty embarrassing appearances. But I remember on that video, they were both wearing suits and gambling, and I clearly remember Tom Segura on on one table, uh, I think playing blackjack, playing it cool, trying to have a good time. And funny enough, Burt Crusher wasn't on the same table. Instead, he was on the table next to him. And it was so wild that at some point, Tom or someone on that table hit it big or won. And they all started celebrating, jumping up and down. And Burt actually left his own table, ran to Tom's table, and tried to be the center of attention. I mean, it was insane. So my thought is, I don't see how someone like Dana White, who actually sees, you know, gambling more like a sport, could gamble with Burt Kreischer. I just don't see that happening. But yeah, that episode was definitely wild. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Dislike if you didn't like the video. But that is all we have for today. See ya.